everyone. Tonight we'll have uh, be having an English session. So first we'll have a short reminder about the Buddha's teaching and then we'll move into the meditation practice. One of the easiest ways to uh, adjust our practice is to think about the results that we're hoping to attain from the practice. Think about why we're practicing. Think about what are the benefits and the uh, goals, that <coughs> the results that we hope to achieve from the practice. when we look at these uh, when we look at what's important about the practice it helps us to shape our practice it, it makes it clear what we have to do if we want to understand ourselves then we have to we know what we have to do we know what it's going to take to come to understand ourselves we have to look at ourselves, we have to look at who we are, what we are. We can't let our mind wander. We know what it means to be meditating and not meditating. Likewise, if we want to feel peaceful and calm, if we want to quiet our minds, then we can't wander off and think about other things. When we want to straighten our minds, we want to be free from addiction, aversion, greed, anger, delusion. We want to rid ourselves of all of the negative emotions that we have in our mind. Stress, worry, fear, depression, and so on. And then we know what we have to do. It makes it clear the quality of our practice. So often we, it's sufficient to just talk about what we hope to gain from the practice. And that gives us an idea of where we should be in our practice. So what are the things that we get from the practice, the things that we should hope for from it in the practice? Well, first of all, we can split the practice up into its two component parts, the walking meditation and the sitting meditation. Because though they have a lot in common, they're, they obviously have some things uh, not in common. They, ver they differ in, in, in certain respect. Walking meditation is more active. It's... Uh, on the one hand easier and on the other hand more difficult. It's easier to, to do. It feels easier. It feels more um, less, uh, less intense. But on the other hand it's much more difficult to keep your mind still because ordinarily um, when we're active we're used to thinking. We're used to letting the mind be active as well. It's when we sit still or when we lie down, when we quiet the body, that we're used to quieting the mind. Well, walking meditation is a very important example of how to quiet the mind, focus the mind while we're active. To bring the meditation into our daily life so that our whole life becomes quiet and calm and clear, and focused that our mind is strong and, and present at all times. But walking has several benefits for the body that it's, uh, it's worth noting, although this, these are not the main reason why we practice meditation. The reason why we split up into walking and sitting 
partially is because it, it supports bo good bodily health. When we're doing long meditation retreats, walking meditation serves as a, uh, an intermission or, or a, a break from the sitting meditation where we're able to give the body a chance to stretch. And as a result, this has benefits like uh, digesting our food better, helping us to overcome sicknesses, and helping us to be free from sickness and disease, supporting the immune system and so on. The other thing walking meditation does is build patience because it's very repetitive. It's a repetitive action that um, can become very boring if we're used to excitement, if we're used to uh, we're used to uh, activity or, or varied activity we're used to following our, our heart's desire and so on. Walking back and forth, since it's so repetitive, it creates great patience. And it's much like any repetitive work, so it gives us this ability to, to work more efficiently in the tasks that we have to perform um, that are repetitive, that are onerous, that are um, even unpleasant. They can lose their their unpleasantness. Um, and of course, walking meditation helps us to to walk, it helps us to become strong in our walkings, um, because of the movements of the body and the endurance and the patience that it brings. It uh, teaches us to be in tune with our body when we walk, and allows us to walk more efficiently, which can be useful if we intend to walk, if we the kind of person who would walk long distances. Of course, for monks this is an important, uh, an important skill. So being in tune with our body is an important part here. But the biggest benefit of, of walking meditation that's most important for our purposes uh, is that it acts as a segue between um, the non-meditative state and the sitting meditation. Because when we, when we start to meditate, our minds are generally unfocused. And, uh, um, we, have to, we have to force them to sit still, just as we have to f often force our bodies to sit still. And we also have to force the mind to sit still uh, because of the intensity of the sitting meditation. We have to sit still, close our eyes, and we can't get up, we can't scratch our nose, we can't shift about. It's quite difficult because our minds are, when we first start meditating, are still in a state of, of distraction. So walking meditation, as I said, it's easier in this re regard in that we're, um, we're able to move the body. It's, it's the halfway. So we're not, we don't have the complete freedom that we would norm in a normal state, but we're not yet in a meditative, fully meditative state where we have to keep the body and the mind uh, fixed and focused. And so the, the benefit of the walking meditation, the Buddha said, is that it lasts into the sitting meditation. The, the concentration that you gain has an effect for the sitting meditation. It's useful to practice beforehand because the, medit the concentration will then last, will then continue on into the sitting. So these are the reasons why we do walking meditation. But the real benefits that we hope to gain from meditation, um, which are generally associated with sitting meditation but can be equally found in the walking meditation, there are four um, reasons why we practice or benefits to the practice. So once we've done the walking meditation, we're sitting down. Or even now when we haven't done the walking meditation and we're trying to watch our minds, watch our bodies, watch our thoughts and our emotions and the feelings that arise. What, what are the benefits that we can gain from doing this? 
The first one is that we gain happiness and, and peace in the here and now. Uh, last night I went to teach at the Metro, to Metro Detention Center in downtown Los Angeles, teaching federal inmates. Um, and uh, you, you, you sort of get a sense of, of, of their life. We, we were able to go in and see them in their living quarters. Uh, they have a ar living area and then cells all around. And uh, when they came down to meditate, after we finished, I asked them, you know, how was it? And they just said, you know, what, what, a, what an incredible relief from the chaos of, of being in such cramped quarters with so many people. And having to live your life in such cramped quarters where your mind is, is uh, constantly stressed and, and worried and, and unsure about the future. Um, and surrounded by people who are often... Uh, uh, of varied degrees of, of sanity and uh, of, of morality and so on. And so the, there was a group, the, the group that came, a group of women that came down to practice meditation. At the end, they, they were in, 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 in total agreement, unanimous agreement, that. Uh, it was, it was just such a relief, such a, uh, a, a good break from the, from the daily stress and, and the difficulty of being in prison. Uh, I, th I think that's a good example of, <coughs> of this one. When we first sit down, the, the first thing we gain from the practice is this peace and calm. It's a relief. We're able to put aside all of our cares and troubles for a short time. We're able to have this quiet time alone. Uh, it's a chance to um, to sort out many things in the mind. Uh, all of the things that we're still worrying about, stressing about, frustrated about during the day, feeling guilty about, all of our negative emotions, the things that we're still clinging to, we have a chance to sort them out, to acknowledge them, see them for what they are, give them their, their, uh, give them the spotlight for their their time, and then let them go. And so we're able to sort out many things and quiet down our mind in the practice. This is uh, this is not the ultimate goal of the practice. But it's, it's a good enough reason for most people. Uh, most, for most of us, meditation is just a chance to quiet the mind. This is why many people get into meditation, because our minds are not quiet. The meditation, that it, it really is, um, it's the first thing you gain from the meditation, and it's also the last thing that you gain. But, it, but in the sense of being the first thing, it's not really the goal that we're looking for because it's something that's going to disappear once you go back out into the world. What we're looking for is this end piece, the piece that comes at the end once you understand, once you really get it, and, and you learn how to deal with the difficulties of daily life and are able to uh, take it out there into the world and carry the peace and the happiness and the freedom from suffering with you. But this is the first one. This is what we, what we uh, are immediately able to see from the practice, that it's a, it's a relief. The second benefit that we gain is, is knowledge and insight. We come to understand things about ourselves and about the world around us that we, didn't, we couldn't understand before. Why do we suffer? Why do we ob obsess over things? And how? How do we do away with stress? How, to do, how do we do away with suffering? How do we stop ourselves from getting angry? How do we break the cycle of addiction? How do we become free from guilt and worry?
we learn how these things work, we come to understand how our mind works. And we come to see how our mind works in much more detail than before. We, we, when, when our minds don't work the way we'd like, it leads to suffering for us. But we don't really understand what happened there. What did I do wrong? We don't really understand what the, the chain of events was. We know that maybe we got angry, but that's all we know about it. I got angry, I, I couldn't stop myself from getting angry. When we look closer, we see really what happened. There's the seeing something or hearing something, and then there's the thinking it over, and then there's the getting angry, and then there's the thinking it, about it again, and then the getting angry again, and thinking, and then you know starting to think about what you're going to do to get back at the person thoughts of revenge, and then more anger, more thoughts of revenge, and so on. And it actually s snowballs. It's an, it's an entire cycle and chain of events that finally leads us to do things that we regret. The, how meditation accomplishes this is because we're looking at the objects as they arise. The reason why we can't see it normally is because we're not really looking. When we see, we right away start to process it. It's good, it's bad, it's me, it's mine. And we've, we, we've, we've lost sight of, of the object. We've gone into the next stage of, of figuring out what we're going to do to how we're going to react to it. Very reactionary. When we meditate, seeing is seeing. So we say to ourselves, seeing, seeing. When you hear something, hearing, hearing. And, and you're watching it, and you're watching it. Um, you can see how the mind reacts to it. You can see what, what happens in the mind. Seeing, seeing. You get to see that first mind that starts to get angry about it or, or attracted to it. You shift your focus to the the anger or the attraction, angry, angry, or liking, liking, and you can see what happens next. And you get to see the whole um, the whole series of events. You get to really see how your mind works. And so you come to understand how to how to fix all of your problems. You come to understand how to or, or wh why things go occur the way they they do. You you're able to see clearly every situation. When someone comes to you and they're upset and they don't know the they don't know you know what to do, and you just mindfully listen and you watch your own emotions and your own reactions, and then you think about what they're saying and. You, are clearly aware of the situation, you're able to fix not only your own problems but other people's as well. You're able to see things clearly. This knowledge and vision is um, it's very important that you get to see, you're able to see reality. You're able to see things much clearer than before. The things don't upset you and um, don't attract you the way they used to, so you don't be fall prey to addiction and and the hatred and so on. The third benefit is is mindfulness itself. Mindfulness and clear awareness. The the, the great thing about my meditation is not only that the, the, the knowledge that you gain from it, knowing what you're doing wrong, but it's also the ability to stop yourself from doing things wrong. What, what's great about the acknowledgement, this mantra that we use, is not only that you learn about, oh, I'm, I'm doing this wrong, I'm doing that wrong, but it actually changes. So when you say, this is good, or this is bad, you're, you're already falling into greed and anger, and, and you're setting yourself up for suffering. But when you, re when you rewind it back and say, loop it back and say, this is this, well, this is seeing, hearing, smelling, uh, pain, or aching, or happiness, or 
calm or so on it is what it is and this cuts off our our emotions it cuts off the anger it cuts off the greed the addiction and you can feel you feel clear when you do it you you really feel like you've totally simplified reality you've simplified your whole experience of reality now you see things for what they are <coughs> the fourth benefit is the final benefit the one that we're really hoping for really working towards and that's the cutting off of defilements the cutting off of the negative mind state the things that are the cause of all of our suffering and the truth about suffering is it's not caused by external objects no one else can hurt you nobody can cause you suffering for you when someone says something nasty to you it's up to you to process that it's up to you to say that's a bad thing that's a mean and nasty and evil thing and, and, and then get angry and hurt yourself feel sad about it feel scared feel stressed or worried depressed you lose your job you lose your home you lose your family your friends these external things cannot make you suffer but we often think it's the proper reaction is to suffer when someone gets yells at me I should get angry and then why should you get angry so you can hurt yourself so you can be in pain so you can suffer or so you can make them suffer when I lose my possession my belonging my job my friend my family it's right it's proper to feel depressed it's proper to cry to feel sad and you ask yourself you know does it, does it get you your job back does it get you your friend back does it get you your family back your, your house your belonging whatever no does it benefit the dead person if someone's passed away no does it benefit you no there's really no benefit to any of these emotions um, you know, save uh, for, on a limited extent you can say things like crying are useful and because it's a chemical it creates a chemical reaction or, or whatever something in the brain and uh, makes you feel happy oftentimes people cry for this reason <coughs> But in the end, none of this is of any benefit. None of this can really make us happy or can really make us unhappy. It's up to us to, it's up to our own minds to interpret things and make ourselves happy or unhappy. When we become addicted to things, we think it's good to be attached to the things that you, lo that you love, that you like, that you enjoy. Only we find that for people who really love and really enjoy things, they become addicted. It's a, it's, it's a cycle. You never really have enough. And people who are more passionate you know, are, are much more subject to the anger and frustration when they don't get what they want. And it's only a matter of degree for all of us. So how meditation does away with these because it helps us to understand. It changes the way we think of, of these objects, of the world around us changes the way we think about our own body and our own mind when we see these things objectively we see them for what they are it, it causes a shift in our, in our way of looking at things we can no longer see um, addictive things as attractive we can no longer see and, and experience unpleasant things as unpleasant we, we can because we, we look at them differently we look at them as they really are when we hear something we look at it as being a sound when we think about something we look at it as being a thought we don't judge we don't say this is good, this is bad, this is me, this is mine it, it creates a paradigm shift 
whereas before we looked at things in terms of what benefit they could bring me in the shortest time possible were they good or are they bad filtering reality compartmentalizing reality this part of reality is acceptable this part is unacceptable tolerate I can tolerate this part I can't tolerate this part this if this comes I, I have to keep it I have to hold on to it and cling to it and make sure it doesn't go away and if this part arises I have to chase it away destroy it end it, stop it get rid of it and so we don't really live um, we don't really uh, live our, our, our full and, and um, natural and harmonious life meditation we change our way of looking at things we're able to experience all the full spectrum of reality we're in total harmony with the present moment being able to accept this right here and right now so here we are sitting still you can ask yourselves am I able to accept this am I able to uh, bear with the experience of this reality all the many facets of it is it acceptable to me? And then we can see that our ordinary state of living is generally suffering, not being able to accept reality, needing for it to be other than what it is. And when we need for that, because there's no way to make it other than what it is, we suffer. And we build up these thoughts of how I can change it and and what I'm going to do to change it and that's just suffering for us once we're able to change it we go on to the next one and then the next bad thing comes and we try to change it as well and we keep running and running and we build up this this compartmentalization this is this is tolerable this is intolerable so meditation has these very profound benefits very simple but very profound Meditation practice is a very simple concept. Uh, it's not that it's hard to understand. It's just very, very hard to practice. And that's simply because we're used to the wrong way. We've lived our lives focused on the wrong, uh, the wrong way of living. And not just this life, but where we've come from is is a way of living a way of, of, of understanding the world and reacting to the world that is um, bound up in suffering bound up in clinging and craving and wanting and needing and addiction uh, and aversion and uh, anger and frustration and boredom and so on liking and disliking this is our way of approaching reality so when we understand these I think this is very useful for us in the meditation we can see what are we trying to do in the meditation when we walk or when we sit we're just trying to look and to see things as they are we're trying to understand we're trying to change the way we look at things we're saying to ourselves no the way I react to things is not proper the way I interact with the world around me is not bringing me happiness I'm not really content and happy with things as they are right now. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to try to understand things better. Try to understand reality better so that when I see things, when I hear, when reality comes to me, I'll be able to react correctly. I'll be able to answer the questions that reality poses to me. What to do next? I'll have a clearer understanding of what to do next. That's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to change things. We're not trying to leave our bodies, and leave reality and go to some exotic place. We're trying to understand my life for what it is. Uh, clearer and uh, more, more correct, more exact. So that's the Dhamma for today. And now we'll go continue on with our meditation. First we'll do the mindful prostration, then walking, and then sitting.